Hello, Wasabikas, and welcome uh, to this Wasabi podcast for the very first recording uh, on this new series of conversations uh, and uh, interesting information about this uh, very crazy rabbit hole uh, that is the Bitcoin privacy space. Uh, and today I am very excited uh, to get this round of conversation started with the one and only Nopara73, Adam Fixorn, uh, who has been, well, the main brain and lead inspiration and lead uh, driving motor behind the Wasabi wallet and who has been working on it since, uh, well, the very early days in 2015. Uh, so we will go today a bit about through the history of Wasabi wallet, how it all started, uh, why Adam actually chose to work uh, on this uh, very, very crazy project, uh, who were the other co-contributors from the early stages, uh, and where is the project at uh, now currently. Uh, so I think this will be a, a nice recap of all these things that have been happening uh, here in the Wasabi space for the last couple of years. Uh, so Adam, hello and welcome. Hey Max, thanks for having me. Oh yes, this is gonna be a really, really uh, curious conversation. I'm, I'm sure we're gonna learn a lot of uh, trivia and, and little tidbits uh, about the early history of Wasabi. Um, so maybe let's uh, just get right into it. Uh, Adam, uh, so first of all, um, before you even got into the Bitcoin space, uh, what m made you curious? Like, what made you look out for uh, finding Bitcoin? What What was that trigger that made you curious about venturing out here? It's a good question. So, on the practical level, I was simply just a programmer who was starting to become not a newbie one anymore, but somewhat of an advanced beginner. So I was able to create my own softwares at the time. And I was eager to put that into a test. And I saw this project, I actually in 2015, December at Christmas time, you know, what else would you do? But keep reading the Bitcoin subreddit. <laughs> and I saw this project there um, submitted in, it's called Joy Market. And a lot of people were very excited about it, despite that it was only a command line software at the time. And I thought it might be a very good time to get involved in Bitcoin development. So that was my basic idea to, to to create a user interface for join market, which I did, but it didn't work. And I ended up learning a lot about Bitcoin privacy along the way and somehow ended up with Wasabi Wallet. Now that's that's very interesting. So you were lurking around on just Bitcoin forums uh, and, uh, and accumulating information there. Uh, but eventually you found the join market project and you, you actually got active uh, and, and started contributing. Why join market? What made this project so special? So, you know, what I, there were many ideas around and, and there are many ideas around even today, but at the time there were many ideas and none of them were, you know, practical, like people just couldn't use them even if they had been built properly because the researchers didn't think of some fatal user experience flaw. So Joy Market was not such a thing. In fact, uh, Joy Market is, is still the, the most user-friendly way of constructing coin joins, even though people say the, the tools built around it are a bit, uh, bit clunky, but on a on, on simply a protocol level, on the theoretical level, join market is the most user friendly coin joins because you're doing coin joins instantly there, which is like huge. Yeah, so um, from the protocol itself, uh, the coin join can happen instantly. That's one big aspect. Uh, and it can happen to the custom specification of the user, right? So with the specific amount, with the specific fee rate, 
And with the an specific anonymity set, uh, that one user, especially the taker, um, decides to have in this round. Right? So this is a very convenient uh, user experience indeed. Okay, but then um, Adam, I was I was interesting. How was your uh, how was your initial experience with let's say the free software development profit, the process uh, of Join Market, which uh, is for sure a, like a very uh, cypherpunk and, and uh, uh, yeah rather interesting and unique project. Uh, so, what were your experiences and learnings here? Mm, that's a good question because I came from a Microsoft background, so. I didn't have much open source experience before started working on Bitcoin projects. And it was quite a breeze. And, and actually I would say if I did not get into the Bitcoin open source ecosystem and started to do there, I think I would have long uh, stopped programming, stopped writing software at that point because it's not mm -hmm. that motivating to write softwares that yeah, no one yeah. should be able to read the source code and six people are going to use it in a control room. I mean, it's a nice thing too. It's just, you know, I needed some some more motivation and I believe the the Bitcoin open source community was the, the factor that, that helped me push through that initial, huge initial obstacles with, with programming in general, right? Because programming is hard and, and it's hard to get to, to a point where you actually start to enjoy it. But, but after a point, it, it becomes more like a, like a second language. You don't, you don't end up in, uh, all kind of traps, um, during software development after that you, 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 you got the syntax, you, you got everything. You just have to, to write down something and, and, it, and it's more like, like painting that, you know, in the beginning you are trying to figure out that, um, how to draw that line and these kind of things. And that can be really frustrating. And at the, after you get more experienced with painting, you just, you know, you, you just get into a flow. And I would say with programming, you get into a flow much, much later than other kind of art forms. Yes, that's very interesting. Um, so two points I want to highlight here. Uh, for one was like your motivation on why to actually write software. Right? So you, you started out in the proprietary closed source space, right? Where uh, only some selected uh, individuals were enjoying the benefits of the software that you were writing. Uh, and, I, and I hear that one of the reasons uh, why you were so intrigued with open source in, in the initial days was uh, that that community aspect, right? That there was a, a community, I, I would guess, both collaboration and um, usage uh, of the software. Uh, but can you go a bit more specifically into the difference here between your earlier working experience and then why you chose uh, to work on free software instead? You know, maybe I, I don't go into more specifically, but I go into this in more generally. And maybe I could bring up a metaphor of, you know, computer games. Um, you know, there is this thing called Grand Theft Auto, and I was playing with it in 2010 or very long time ago. I'm not sure in the newest versions what do you do, but in that version, what I was doing is picking up people and putting them down. So basically I was the taxi and you know, like what, what enjoyment do you get out of getting people from one place to another? Um, what I would say is that what you're doing in every video games is you're completing tasks and that's what makes you feel like it's worth going when, when something is not, not right. When a problem exposes, when a problem reveals itself to you and you fix it, that's what video games are all about. And software development is the same in open source setting. 
when you're free to do anything, you just go on GitHub and you just look through a bunch of repositories on GitHub and a bunch of problems reveal, reveal themselves to you. And then you can choose the ones those are the most, well, those, the ones those are, you know, you are able to tackle them and, and then you complete them and then other people merge your pull request, which is like, good job. Good job. You just contributed something. You solved the problem and other people acknowledged it. And, and I think that's the, that's what open source development is all about solving problems. Okay, that's really interesting, right? The, the, the problem solving aspect. There's an issue, it annoys you, and you want to fix it. Right? And that is something that free software specifically is all about, right? So that the code is open, that you can read it, that you can find the bug, right? The problem that, that is there that is annoying you, uh, and that you have the right to, to change it, right? At least for yourself uh, and to fix the problem, um, but also to share it with others, right? And, and to make the software for everyone better by fixing that problem for everyone. I, uh, so I agree that free software really, uh, it, like problem solving is at the core part of it. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. So what were maybe some of the uh, problems that you saw in developing jo the join market graphical user interface? What were some problems that you were stumbling over that were difficult? So, you know, since I was new to open source development, I wasn't just going around and solving problems, but I... I thought I'm going to solve some, some big problem right away. And I did not succeed to solve that big problem, which was creating a user interface for Joy Market, which I did, but then I did not succeed to, to connect together my C sharp code, my .NET code with the Python code that join market is written in. And I did not ask for help for, for a long time as I was trying to do that. But then there was a bunch of problems with command line acting differently, acting very strange ways. And, and, and actually later I figured out that the, the problems were much, much more deeper than, than I, I initially thought. But anyhow, so there was one, one time when I, I created a issue on join market that, Hey guys, maybe I would, I would love to have an API to, to join market. And, and they said, Oh yeah, that's a good idea, but, uh, no one did it. So, so I, I, I guess that that was the end of my join market career <laughs> that I tried to create something and I did not succeed, but, uh, it was a great learning experience nevertheless. Yeah. Right. Even, uh, tackling a really large problem and failing to fix it. Uh, there can be many very interesting learnings out of that. Um, so what was that point when you decided, uh, to start working on your own complete Bitcoin privacy wallet? Like what was, what was the reason that, that, uh, the, the, that you had here? Oh, so I did that right away. Actually, I, I did that right away in December, 2015. Uh, what I had in mind, I, I created a lean canvas and I did not actually want to work on join market. It just join market was the most appropriate tool for the job. But what I had in mind is that, uh, I create a Bitcoin wallet, which is going to utilize the most, the most advanced privacy techniques, uh, that still enables, um, seamless user experience. And, 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 and yeah, so I, I, I decided on that. In fact, I, I came up with the previous name of Wasabi wallet. Uh, I called it hidden wallet. And I came up with that at that time, at, at the beginning. And that's an interesting story also how the, <laughs> because we had to change the name, but we didn't have to change the name, but we thought that it might be better if we come up with something friendly like Wasabi Wallet instead of Hidden Wallet. And, and you know, in, in hindsight, it's, 
it, it was a great decision. Well, okay, let's dissect that first question. Why did you come up with the name Hidden World? Hmm, you know, that, that sounds like, like, like something that, that's privacy centric. So that, that was the, the idea. Hmm. Yeah, so the entire project was a privacy first approach, right? In a very privacy centric approach. So, of course, why not reflect that in the name? Um, but what were some of the issues that you saw with that? Specific, uh, in, uh... So, you know, as, as I was working on, on Hidden Wallet, I, I, the first version, what I imagined is, you know, Join Market was using Blocker.io as the, well, it was using a full node and Blocker.io. A full node is a full Bitcoin node is a 350 gigabyte thingy on your computer. And of course, most people do not have that. So Joy Market was using at the time Blocker IO, which is a web API that tells you how much money you have when you tell them that which Bitcoin addresses are yours. So that's not a very private way of establishing your wallet balance. And in fact, I'm not going that far ahead. So that's not a very private way of establishing your wallet balance. But at the time, I did not realize it, that that's not good. And that's how I wanted to do, do hidden wallets on top of join market that it's going to just use join market uh, mechanism, which was blocker IO. But then I, I realized that, oh, that's not very good. And actually join market removed that later because they realized that that's, that's not very good either. I suppose it was a proof of concept at that point. Uh, but, but the point is that, so you have to have something and well, join market said, uh, well, it's going to be a full node because there isn't a better way. And I said, I have a lot of time and hopefully talent too. So I can figure out how to do, how to do private balance retrieval in Bitcoin, even though no other light wallet have done it until then. And, and in fact, not even currently, uh, there are some, some ways of how, how to not leak your privacy on the network level in Bitcoin, but, but only Wasabi is the only one that actually like does it as a light wallet. So, so hidden wallet was the first time to, to create a light wallet that doesn't leak your, your network level privacy. And I might be going into the details a bit too much, but what I ended up building for hidden wallet was not the same, what we ended up having with, with a Wasabi wallet right now. So what were these uh, original building blocks of Hidden Wallet that, uh, that made it so unique? What was like the original uh, MVP? Mm, so originally, uh, so, so, so if, you, if you think about Bitcoin privacy, there are two things you have to be aware of. One is how do you establish your wallet balance and how do you broadcast transactions? This is called network level privacy. The other is how do you ensure privacy on the blockchain level. And that's where coin joins come in. Initially, none of the technologies were, were the ones those Wasabi have today, because initially Hidden Wallet was using, uh, well, I, I built a wallet that was a full node, but only downloaded blocks from the creation of the wallet. So it, it, it somewhat emulated that a light wallet feel on desktop. And I have to say it wasn't very successful because it felt somewhat even heavier than a normal, than a full node <laughs> today, uh, which, but you know, like one developer cannot compete hundreds of Bitcoin core developers. So. I'm not that hard on myself because of this. Anyhow, later on, the Lightning Network developers came up with a solution to do, to do, do light wallets with, with privacy and it's called the neutrino filters. And that's what we are doing with Wasabi currently. On the blockchain level, I was 
at first, as we talked about, I wanted to do joy market, but then I had an opportunity to work on Tumblebeat with some really smart people, which is which is not a coin join based privacy solution for Bitcoin. And I was working on that a lot, but then I realized with CoinJoin I could do the exact same thing, but uh, but I could do very similar things, but but much cheaper and faster. So that's when I came up with the zero link protocol, and and well implemented into Wasabi. And currently we are in the process of replacing that with even a more advanced one. So. That will be interesting too if you have something to look after. Yes, yes, the far future, which at that point is still four four years away. <laughs> um, okay, Adam. So actually, at what point um, were other people getting involved in working on uh, Hidden Wallet? Uh, no one actually worked on Hidden Wallet because. So, you know, fun, funny story, um, we called it, as soon as Lucas joined me, um, we started to, well, we realized that we don't, we don't want to go with uh, this name, but we want to have some friendly name for it. And our first idea was, well, we had to work in something, some GitHub repository, and we had to name the, the wallet somehow, and we called it Magica Crypto Wallet. <laughs> But there are people called Magica Crypto Friends, and they thought it might be not a good idea for us to call it like that. So then we we ended up with Wasabi Wallet. Huh. The magical crypto wallet. Funnily, there was a, a magical Bitcoin wallet um, developed by Alexo, Alekos um, Fleni. Uh, uh, and this also got renamed to now the Bitcoin wallet library. Um, so it seems that the magical Bitcoin and crypto wallets uh, are intermediate wallet names for important projects. You could call it temporary Bitcoin wallet. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and uh, also one of, the, uh, one of the important aspects, right? Uh, you uh, are for a long time a C sharp developer. Uh, and this was, as you said earlier, one hindrance while with working with join market. Right, you could not really express your C sharp knowledge uh, and, and and code uh, in the join market project easily, and I would assume that this was one of the reasons why you started working with uh, Tumblebit, uh, because that is also a C sharp project. Yeah, I think you know this story already, so that's how you assume that. But it might be worth re 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 reiterating that when. When I realized I'm not going to solve the issues uh, that I had with with building on join market, I I did not give up. Actually, I persisted and I decided that I'm going to rewrite join market from the bottom up, bottom up in C sharp because because I was stupid, you know, young and and I thought I can do every anything and and I decided, but you know, I didn't even know how to write code, how to write Bitcoin code at that point, and I had to learn it somehow. And in fact, uh, I didn't even have the tools at the time. So, so for a very long time, I couldn't get involved in Bitcoin programming because I didn't have the tools. There were no libraries, no nothing. So. So, but then I realized that, oh, someone was already, someone already created all the Bitcoin libraries in C Sharp and broke down all the crypto voodoo into object oriented niceness. And, and that someone is a French gentleman. And I sent him an email as, as to, I, I just wanted to learn from him and, 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 and get to him and, you know, in turn, whatever, just, just want to work with you. And, and he said he, he's, he's okay with that and fly to Japan because it turned out he was living in Tokyo at the time. 
And three months later, or a month later, sometime later, I got on a plane and flew to Japan to learn from Nicola Dorier, Bitcoin programming in C sharp. And, and so I can, well, I, I wanted to convince him to, to work, on, work with me on, on, on this joint market wallet, but he did not, he did not. He wasn't very interested in that. So he wasn't very interested in privacy. At, the, at that point, I was, I got obsessed with privacy. Not, I don't think for good reasons. I didn't really think that through. I did it now, but at the time I just, I just get this in my head that, well, we have to build privacy. Um, anyhow, uh, so, so I, I, I learned from Nicola and then I, I, I left Japan and uh, flew to Taiwan. I decided that I won't be able to rewrite joint market from scratch. So the next most smartest thing to do would be to learn Python and just start working on joint market. <laughs> um, and so I started learning Python. But in the meantime, Nicola Doria somehow got interested in privacy. And there was a new research project called Tumblebit, and that project, and he's going to to write a code for that. So it was for me an obvious opportunity to I, I had to take on. I mean, working with with Nicola Doria is 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 great, and and I have to take on this opportunity. So that's why the first versions of Wasabi was actually Tumblebit. Was using Tumblebit instead of join mark instead of coin joins and and instead of join market too. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, so, uh, what was Tumblebit about? Uh, what made it unique? So it was very hard to explain it back then, but today is much more easier because now we have this thing called the Lightning Network, and the Lightning Network is, for those who don't know, is a bunch of hubs that translessly channel your payments. And Tumblebit is very similar, except it's not a network. It's just one single hub, and that hub is anonymous. Um, unfortunately, there are some, some design issues, with some some serious limitations of the current Tumblebit protocol. And, and, you know, don't believe me because I think since then so many things happened that I think we can, yeah. it's probably even possible to do it without these limitations. But, uh, but for, at the time we had these limitations, which is it was an unidirectional payment channel, which means you can only send in one direction, like you can either receive or send, but not both. And another problem with Tumblebit was that you had to, in order to, to, to have any privacy, you had to be equal amounts. So you, you had to have equal amounts to other people, which is which, which, which is a, a very general problem in, 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 in kind of every privacy solution, right? Even, even with Tor, it's equal packet size, uh, which is, which is very important. But, uh, but you know, that, that was the problem with Tumblebit that you could create a channel, you could send equal amounts to other people. So it wasn't very practical, but the white paper of Tumblebit was so, so long and so crypto dense, so so mat mathematics heavy that I think I spent half a year trying to just understand the white paper and and even just to grasp that it has such uh, such usability, user experience issues. So yeah, if I would have known from the beginning, then I might have did not go into that, but, but anyhow, I, I, I learned a lot from, from that point. 
from from that experience. Uh, it, it's it's something like when you when you choose a when you decide on what should be your goal or or let's call it star when you decide on what should be your star in 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 life and then you move towards that star but as you're walking that path then you realize that that might not be the right star to go towards to but there is another one very close to that star that you were going towards and you might start walking that way um and if you if you take stock at any point then you might have been chasing the wrong things but you got closer to the right thing at any point so the journey isn't a waste of time in in that sense yeah very beautiful um i i wonder uh because both Nicholas and you worked on Tumblebit, and eventually um, you saw the downsides of this and and moved on to your own project. Uh, was this roughly at the same time uh, where Nicholas um, moved on to doing other things by himself as well? Mm. So I think Nicola Doria started out with N Bitcoin. So he started out writing Bitcoin in recreating Bitcoin in C sharp. And after that, he, you know, I, I remember he was very eager about a Bitcoin wallet called Copay, which was from a company BitPay. And, and, and he really liked it. I mean, he, he was showing me that this is how you can get the XPUB out of Copay <clears throat> and that other wallets are not capable of that. <clears throat> But later on, there was this infamous incident when, uh, when, when all these segwit, uh, segregated witness scaling wars were going around and then BitPay put an article out that was, that was about Bitcoin fees and, and I'm not quite sure what was that, but the very famous tweet have has been by Nicola Doria has been a reaction to that to that article from BitPay and he he said this is lies my trust in you is broken I will make you obsolete and what he did is that he went ahead and wrote an open source BitPay replacement and that is called BTC pay. Actually, personally, I don't think that's a bit pay replacement, but, uh, but that's close enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it started out with, I think the frustration of working on some weird like, uh, corporate software, um, <laughs> and, uh, saying that we can do so much better in a pure free software type. Uh, and that started out with BTC Pay server, but I agree, spe especially by now, BTC Pay is so much more uh, than just a bit pay replacement. It, it has really outgrown um, uh, what Nicholas strived out to achieve at first. Okay, so so at that point, um, you you had uh, like you started working on that own client based, uh, or was Hidden Wallet already based on and Bitcoin? Yes, yes. I, I, I started to develop on N Bitcoin as soon as I learned everything from Nicola Doria. Okay, nice. Uh, and, and then um, one, also one other aspect was the graphical user interface. Uh, how was that in Hidden Wallet? Mm. Mm. Okay, so at the very first time, you know, I had an experience in Windows Forms programming. So the Joy Market version of the hidden wallet was only able to run in Windows and Windows Forms is a, is a, it was even an obsolete technology by that time. Uh, so, so that, that didn't look very well. And later on, I 
you know, that the, the interesting thing that Microsoft started to move into open source at that point, and there was no open source graphical user interface framework. And today there is a lot, but at that time there, there wasn't much to choose from. So I decided that these, the JavaScript guys like to do a lot of, um, a lot of bloating, software bloating in, in that sense that how you get a JavaScript UI on, on, a, on desktop is that you use a software called a framework called Electrum, which is basically a dumb down Google Chrome that you create your own UI on top of that Google Chrome thingy. And well, you can make actually beautiful softwares, beautiful, beautiful resource intensive softwares with that. But my, but then I realized, so, so I, I, I wrote hidden wallet with that, but then I realized that might not be a good, good way to go with, with, uh, for Bitcoin privacy, but for, for any Bitcoin wallet, because, you know, these JavaScript bloated frameworks are not well known about security. And, 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 and so I, I decided again that I have to find something else. And that's how we ended up having Avalonia, which is, which is a UI framework that that's written for, for C sharp and, and much more lighter than Electrum and not obsolete at like Windows forms and works cross platform. Yeah, I think you, you mentioned a couple of the highlights here, right? It's written in C sharp. It's a cross platform desktop application or, or framework. Um, and I, I think one of the nice, uh, or one of the important aspects was also the contribution from Dan Welmsley. At one of the maintainers of the Avalonia project, uh, and he started collaborating to Wasabi. Uh, so, can you speak uh, a bit more about uh, that relationship? Sure. So, I was looking for UI frameworks, and I found this Avalonia to be the best fit. But the thing was that it was still somewhat an alpha software, so I I knew I would have a lot of problem with that. And I, I was starting to looking for developers who are working with Avalonia and I found them an Avalonia maintainer actually, Dan Vamsey. And I wanted to, to hire him. I, I wanted to get together with him just like with Nicola Dorier and write a software, write, write a UI for Wasabi Wallet because at that point, uh, everything was ready except the, except the UI part. And actually, I got invited to the Breaking Bitcoin conference in 2017 or 18 to Lisbon. And, and we went, and, and I went there, and Lucas, who was working with me at the time already, came there too. That's where we are going to announce Wasabi Wallet, which is funny because the UI wasn't ready at that point. So, so we had a lot of work to do, but it turned out then, then Vamsey was having a vacation right there in Lisbon at that point. So what we did is I don't think his wife was very happy about that, but he spent coding Wasabi Wallet with us on his vacation. <laughs> and, and we actually put it together to demo it and, and, and have it announced in the, in the Breaking Bitcoin talk. So that's, that's how the very first alpha version of Wasabi Wallet have born in that few weeks we put the UI together. Yeah, uh, quite fantastic. That's a that's a last minute save uh, of of the demo 
uh, by then coming in to uh, fix the UI. Uh, that's cool. Um, so at, at that point in Lisbon, really Wasabi Wallet came together, right? There was the underlying infrastructure. We have these uh, block filters to preserve a light client uh, with the, 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 the privacy of a light client. Um, while, kill, while still keeping it like uh, snappy and and smooth and running instantly, um, together with all the Tor or yeah, what was the Tor implementation actually at this point? Mm, that was again a really hard job to do because of course there was no Tor library in C sharp, so I had to write my own, which took me a couple of months. But at that time it was already ready, so we didn't have to worry about that. Oh, so you wrote your ent uh, or a entire Tor uh, library in C sharp. What was that process? That was the easy part. The hard part was to write the HTTP protocol in C sharp because for some reason I had to do that too. There was no code around that I could have used. Uh, the Tor Tor library was was somewhat easy. You're just communicating with the process through a special protocol, uh, but the the HTTP protocol, that's what I, I spent months on. Uh -huh, interesting. Um, so there, there were really multiple things here coming together that you had to write from scratch. <laughs> so uh, co comparing that to the uh, contributions to join market or tumble right? there was already something there. Um, but here it was a very rudimentary build it yourself. Well, you know, everything was coming together except the users, <laughs> which was, which was very important because I actually thought I was very naive. I thought like, you know, at, at that point it became clear to me that there is no user friendly way to use Bitcoin privately. And Wasabi was, was that. So what I thought is like, I'm going to announce it and everyone's going to use Wasabi right away because it's such a great tool that why would you use even anything else? But that's not how it happened. It takes more time for people to switch to, to switch wallets. Yeah, it's, it just, it's not like downloading just another media player application and try it out. It's, you know, you have to, take your money from an old wallet to another one. And that's, uh, that's a much larger obstacle to, to, to overcome. Yes, that's really true. And, you know, funnily, this was something that I realized early as well, because uh, as I heard about you speaking about uh, hidden wallet on, you know, shows like the Block Digest, uh, I got interested and downloaded the software, uh, and I noticed a couple, uh, like three, uh, um, horrifying things. Um, first, it was white mode, right? Uh, that 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 was absolutely unusable. Uh, my eyes were bleeding uh, instantly within seconds uh, after using. Um, a tour was broken. Uh, I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't connect. Nothing was working. Um, um, and then when finally uh, the tour issue got got resolved. Uh, <laughs> I realized that there were like two peers waiting to coin join, two out of five, and we still have like uh, twenty two hours in the registration time. Um, so I realized that there are no users, and therefore we will not really have large coin join transactions, and therefore there's no anonymity sense, and therefore there's no transaction privacy. Right. So the one of the key pillars of the benefits of of Wasabi or hidden wallet Wasabi was that coin join ability. Right, despite all the network level privacy that we talked about, um, the the ability to coin join is just this next level uh, of privacy defense, uh, and that really relied on users. Um, so, what were your initial plans uh, for this, for for adopting more and more users? Mm, that's actually a very good point, and there was even a research paper about that. That's called "Anonymity Loves Company," and the idea there is that. Even do it's possible that an anonymity system is used is much better on the technical level than an anonymity system than another anonymity system. But if the other anonymity system is more usable, 
it will have much more users and end up providing much more privacy than the the better anonymity system would. Um, and I'm not quite sure what was your question. Um, as, as you said, the size of the anonymity set is important, right? The larger the crowd, the more you, know, you disappear in, inside of it. Uh, so the question is, uh, you started out with almost no uh, anonymity set. There was basically only you using the software, maybe Lucas uh, and Dan, uh, and eventually me, but not many other people. So what were your original plans to in increase that anonymity set size uh, and to onboard more users? So to be honest, there was there were people from the beginning, and I have no idea how, but a few people, five or six, from the beginning, I mean, from the beginning of Wasabi Wallet, not Hidden Wallet, Wasabi Wallet. And, and, and that number steadily started rising. You know, we had a coin join with five people every five, every, every day, every second day. And then it slowly started to raise that now it's about 70, 100 people coin joins every hour or so, which is, which, which is, which is awesome. You know, it, it just started to raise. I, I assume that there is no other way to, to use Bitcoin privately. So why wouldn't it, why wouldn't it? rise by itself. Um, we could have done more marketing, but maybe it's, it's better better that we didn't do because it's it's more organic organic this way. And maybe it's we should we should make the software more appealing for new users in before we would do any kind of marketing. That's that's the idea. Yeah, this is basically the, the ethos of cypherpunks write code. Right? Produce a high quality software that actually solves problems for people. And as soon as there is a tool out there to fix a problem, if the problem is big enough, users will come because it's a useful tool and it will fix their problem. Uh, so I think this was really one of uh, like a big, big, big strength uh, of Wasabi. Uh, that there was actual code shipped, right? It was a usable software that even in the very early stages provided a, a substantial improvement um, to privacy compared to existing uh, wallets. Yeah, you know, it's uh, at the beginning, Wasabi was very user-friendly and today it is not very user-friendly. So how the hell that happened? Did we ruin something? And we did not. It's just the expectations changed. The people who we were targeting, the you know, the small technical minority. Now it's like there must be a way to use Bitcoin privately. I mean, what kind of payment system would it be if there isn't any? It would be a shitty, a bad, very bad payment system. So so we must make it make it appealing for for new users because otherwise i mean i'm not sure what kind of future we will have to look ahead yes right this siphons back to the original question of of why are you actually working on this um so so why do you see such a big importance in privacy specifically uh on that uh, larger scale as you just spoke about so today I thought a lot about it and I can approach this question from many different directions, but I think what I'm going to take is what I think is the most correct, most correct way of approaching this question, which is looking at what a functioning money should do what properties good money should have and 
there is an economic <clears throat> there is an economic uh, well i suppose ongoing research or theory regarding that which is the properties of good money but but even if you are looking at any other kind of economic theory then privacy will be one of the most important thing that good money has to do and the properties of good money says that a money in order to be usable it has to adhere to a few principles and i think the economic debate is about what are these principles exactly but what is definitely there is portability fungibility uh, acceptability and and some of these but what i i like to concentrate on is portability fun and fungibility because every other thing every other property of good money have been solved by bitcoin almost to a perfect level so bitcoin's big thing compared to fiat currency was scarcity which means you cannot print more because somehow we are living in a world where we just accept that some people can print more money, which is somewhat crazy if you think about it. But anyhow, uh, portability and fungibility are the things that Bitcoin isn't very good at. And portability is actually something that many people are working on. And that's what all the Lightning Network hype is about. But fungibility is, is traditionally considered to be a risky thing to work on because, because governments hate privacy and, and so you're a criminal if you're working on privacy, something like that. But uh, what I actually realized that governments don't hate privacy. Governments are not, not people. Governments are just are consists of people and those people understand why they have to close the door when they go to toilet so they understand inherently the value of privacy and they're not gonna tell you how much money they have because they value their own privacy <clears throat> so fungibility is something that's not worked on by any other project except except joy market and wasabi wallet and if we don't have a privacy preserving money in the future, which no, that might not be the good way to phrase it. So, because there are privacy altcoins, right? But the point is that if Bitcoin takes over the world and if Bitcoin won't have much better privacy guarantees, then we're going to have a very bad future. And that's why I'm working on privacy on Bitcoin and not on other things. Yeah, I very much agree. Uh, Bitcoin solves a lot of the inherent um, aspects of money, uh, but the privacy aspect is one that really is lacking. Or it, it has a lot of potential. Uh, I, th I think it has been mistreated a lot. Um, but it can be used to a, a private extent. Um, and we see that with Wasabi, I think. Um, but yes, it's definitely an important uh, and worthwhile goal to work on. Um, so Adam, after this demo in Lisbon, um, where kind of the Wasabi for the first time came together, um, the Tor, the, the Bitcoin part, uh, the, uh, block filters, the graphical user interface, the coin join, of course. Um, uh, um, or actually, let's talk a bit more about the coin join specifically because I don't think we have. Um, what was or how did you look at join market coin joins, and wh why did this lead you and, and Tumblebit payment channels, and why did this lead you to discovering Zero Link? Mm. Okay, let me see. So I explained Tumblebit as the lightning network without the network part but that's not exactly correct because 
there are two tumble bits, two modes of tumble bit, and one is the payment hub mode, which I actually explained. But another one is a Bitcoin mixer mode, which is an easier thing to build, but that can so so that's what we were building because that was hard enough. And then I realized that the Bitcoin mixer mode of Tumblebit could be done easier with coin joins. Easier in, in terms of it's actually easier to write the code because coin joins are really simple and security guarantees of coin joins are are inherent. So if I remember correctly, with Tumblebit, one round of of mixing round would have took eight transactions. With coin joins, it only took one. And so one round of mixing round with Tumblebit would have took eight to ten hours or even more. And with coin join it's it's somewhat instant. It's just a single confirmation. So that was you know, it, it I was into this into Tumblebit for I think for a year at that point. I was working on Tumblebit and and it it sounds simple that oh yeah, it was the coin joints are eight times fast eight times faster and sorry, eight times cheaper and and much, much faster. But you know, if you put so much time into a project project to work on then it's really hard to see that when something better comes along and but luckily i i realized that and that's that's why i changed to to working on coin joins instead okay so that aspect of simplicity right that a coin join is an atomic privacy transaction so Adam, let's maybe talk a bit about the next milestones uh, that you had um, uh, after that conference in Lisbon, after releasing that first prototype of Wasabi. Hmm. Let's talk about that. I did not have milestones, but I knew that I have to make this software much more stable than it was at the time. And you know, I didn't have experience with working with other programmers. In fact, at that point, I only worked with one other programmers for a long period of one other programmer for a long period of time, who's called Molnar David. And he was the first person who I learned about programming. And now he's actually the CTO of Wasabi Wallet. So that turned out well. <laughs> But uh, but I just assume that, you know, it's open source software, so programmers are smart and probably even smarter than me, so they can figure out what to work on by themselves. And so that's how we went for for a year or or so, with many people even until today, that we did not have a single objective. We just, here is this thing, more and more people are using it, so let's make it better and better as we can. That was the, the strategy. And, and we ended up with a bunch of five finished features, but, uh, but we are starting to fill up the holes. And with Wasabi Wallet 2.0, I think, I think all the holes will be, all the larger holes will be, will be filled up. That was half, half implemented before. Okay, so that next quest was was really stability uh, and uh, and improving the the uptime and the, the quality of the software, and and exactly. David, yeah, and and David, I think really was a, a huge help in this uh, because he brings just a, a very deep uh, experience in C sharp developing uh, and, and high quality in production software, um, so he he has been really essential, I would say. Yes, you know, I was courting David for for two years at that point. Of course, I wanted him to work with me on my project ever since I, I wanted to do it with join market instead of, instead of the current coin join technology. And, and I, 
and I, I, I told David many times to come work with me on this, but he, he never did until he, he did finally. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, this is one of the genius things about the Wasabi project. Um, and I think it was a key part in why you succeeded in uh, gathering so many high quality contributors to stick around for the long term um, is actually the company uh, setup uh, that you have created, the company CK Snacks. Um, so can you speak a bit about why you set up that company? Mm, so I can't take credit for that because another thing that I realized early on, just because of the, of the huge fear of, that was around in the Bitcoin community, that if someone's working on privacy, then he's not going to end well. And even us Bitcoiners might be drawn down in the future when they realize that the fiat system is being replaced by Bitcoin which didn't happen, well, yet, hopefully it won't. Anyhow, um, so I, my genius idea was, so, so, so for a very long time, for two years, I was working into it and I, I wanted to make this software uh, free in a way that anyone can use it for free and it won't have income except from donations and did not have much donations. So anyhow, my idea was that I might team up with some people who get the, the business side of things, who get the legal side of things. And <clears throat> I contacted my law teacher I contacted my law teacher uh, from university back then, and he had a company, and he still has at, at that time, and he was running it with another uh, guy who, who was an economist, but I thought he's a lawyer because I had no idea what the difference between an economist and a lawyer. I was that ignorant at that point. <laughs> so anyhow, I I I, sh I showed them my my product, hidden wallet, and 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 they said this is crazy. It's never gonna work. You're not going to like. You cannot do this. You cannot build privacy. So I left their office and and went ahead alone. But a month later. They called me back that they actually looked around that, well, you know, like privacy is not a crime and there is really no reason to be afraid of regulatory crackdown because, because of, of that. So I think we can do this. And so we did, we did do that, but because I had to team up with other people now it it can it couldn't continue as an open source software project anymore without a company because and without an income because you know like more people are working on it on it and they have to like feed their families and stuff like that so so i thought maybe maybe let's just start having an income and build such a great product that will be the bastion of privacy in Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin will be a private money instead of this weird semi-transparent thingy. So that was the, the idea. That's how we created the company. Yeah, very interesting. And I think you really hit home a sweet spot here uh, because it's so, first of all, it's so important that the software is free and open source, right? If it were closed source, it's just out of the question for any serious Bitcoin wallet. Um, but, but secondly, I mean, there's so many free and open source software projects that are awesome, but that are just not developed on, not even maintained, let, let even alone improved and, 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 you know, innovated upon. Uh, so 
that there is this company that does have a revenue stream, um, which is generated mainly by it, 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 them using the software, right? So the company uses the software, generates a revenue stream so that it can then improve the software and make it better for both the company and all its users. Uh, I, I think this is a very uh, symbiotic relationship. Yeah, you know, like it's in, in the open source, some people mistake open source as as something that you must do things for free, but that's not the case. I mean, if you create value for other people, then those other people would like to buy that thing that you are creating and they pay for it. So I think it's pretty normal. I mean, if you create something that no one's willing to pay for it, then is that really something that has to come into existence? You know? Yeah, I very much agree here. Right? Value is, is subjective to everyone. Uh, and if, if we only really know if something is valuable when someone else is willing to to sacrifice something in order to get it, right? Not just uh, to get a freebie and and pick up you know some random thing from the street, but to actually have to give up your precious satoshis in order to enjoy the service. Um, that really shows that this is a valued service. Uh, it's it's a great feedback uh, from a bunch of individuals saying that hey, I I love what you're doing. Continue doing it and improve upon it because it's an awesome service. Uh, and I like it so much that here are some Bitcoin for you uh, to help keep up with the operations. Uh, it's uh, it's it's again a very like a very great relationship, I would say. Yeah, I would like to think so. <laughs> Where are we now? What what are we missing in the, in the history of Wasabi up to this point? Is there anything important you would like to mention? I think. Rather, the history of the future of Wasabi, because I never really planned the current Wasabi to be the final product. I wanted to have a light wallet that can do privacy in Bitcoin. But I think the final product has to be a Bitcoin wallet that is easy to use by anyone and provides privacy by default to anyone. And that's what we are working on right now. And that's what we started to work on since the beginning of 2020 in, in January, we started to have, we started to look through all the Bitcoin privacy literature and you pay, you took a, a huge part in that too. In every Monday, we had Bitcoin research. We had the Wasabi Research Club conversation. And at that time, we went through every single Bitcoin privacy paper, research paper that we could have found. And, and we ended up, well, a scheme that I think will be the best privacy technology for a very long time until something groundbreaking comes along. And we called this Wabi Sabi. So what we are working on right now is Wasabi Wallet 2.0, which will include this new privacy technology and also going to include a new user workflow and a new UI. We are taking huge risks here by replacing such main components of the software. However, I don't think we have much choice here because Bitcoin is just warming up for mass adoption. And there are many ways to have mass adoption. And one of the way would be would be with centralized Bitcoin services. Another way would be with decentralized, with non-custodial Bitcoin services, but they wouldn't provide any privacy. So that's 
that's also a very questionable way to have mass adoption. And I prefer to have the third way, which would be Bitcoin mass adoption with privacy. And if we don't start working on the software that can be used by anyone in this world, then I don't see any other project that is trying to do that. So I think we have a huge responsibility in this regard to to succeed and and maybe take some risk of of um, of modifying the user experience of the current software. Yes, I think this really shows that we're like entering a new epoch right now. And uh, out of that first, you know, proof of possibility that the original Wasabi was through a long period of uh, stabilization and improving the core uh, of the Wasabi beast uh, to where we are now, where we really, um, because you realize that currently, for example, we do not ha actually have a transaction level privacy by default, right? There's, there's no default coin join uh, happening in the wallet. Um, and therefore just users who opt in to doing a coin join uh, will actually benefit from, from this privacy. Uh, and other many, many rather uh, fundamentally bad user experience things um, that are in the current version uh, can be improved upon, can be fixed. Uh, and this is uh, one of the big parts of uh, this next uh, epoch in the Wasabi uh, project to build out that uh, future very smooth very easy to use uh, and intuitive user experience um, while still uh, providing uh, that high quality of, of privacy and stability and reliability and of course security uh, that uh, wasabi is known for by now yes exactly and it's not just that but there are current trends that privacy is being criminalized uh, lately in Bitcoin and, and it's a very bad trend to have. And the only way to get ahead of some catastrophic scenario is to have the software ready that's, that's ready to provide you privacy by default and hopefully somehow even have scaling Bitcoin privately. So, so, so yeah, we are, we are, we, we are having a race with time here, um, both in terms of privacy and, and actual scalability too. Yes, that is a good point. Uh, that there, uh, th this is, uh, an ongoing, uh, cat and mouse game, right? Where, where surveillance technology is being improved on and being worked on. Um, and whereas, of course, on the other side, privacy technology is being worked on and improved on. Uh, and I, I think that cat and mouse game will continue uh, for a while uh, on, on all the many different layers. Um, so, so yes, that uh, th there are many, many things to work on. Um, but uh, let's maybe go a bit more into nuance for what Wabi Sabi actually is. Um, where do you see the improvements of Wabi Sabi over Zero Link? Mm, all right. So the cryptography in Zero Link is very simple. And this simplicity doesn't enable us to do interesting things. What is the main limitation of Zero Link is that the amount that you're creating must correspond to a standard denomination. And that's bad because you cannot have very flexible coin joins that way. And with Wabi Sabi, we actually created the cryptograph. We did not create the cryptography. We took it from a paper and, and our cryptographers a bit tailor made it for coin join use case. So <clears throat> now we ended up, so now we can create any kind of coin joins that, that were not possible before. And what we are going to do with that 
it seems to me that this is somewhat finalized at this point that uh, that we are going to create coin joins in a way that every single person looks at every single other inputs in the coin join transaction and creates the most reasonable outputs to have as efficient mix as we can have so this will this will solve many of the the current usability issues with wasabi which is you know with the current wasabi you cannot mix twice so you can mix your coins that you get into your wallet and then you can spend those coins but those coins are going to generate a change now mixing that change is somewhat dangerous it won't be a problem with 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 the uh, with wasabi 2.0 because then the the mixed amounts will be much more flexible and you will not have to always create a specific change in in in, in coin joins a smaller privacy issue is also fixed here which is if you are registering multiple inputs in a coin join which doesn't happen by default by the way but but sometimes it happens because it makes sense then the coordinator would know the links between those inputs and that's something that that the current that that Wabi Sabi solves so the coordinator won't know the inputs between the links between those inputs and what in a, what that enables us is actually have many many inputs or multiple inputs in the same transaction from the same user and they can break it down into arbitrary output amounts or even merge it merge all the input amounts into into one single output amount which is well and this happens completely trustlessly which is is cool another huge problem with current wasabi coin joins is that you will end up with a wallet that's very fragmented with hundreds or thou even thousands of utxos uh, unspent transaction outputs in your wallet and with Wabi Sabi, with Wasabi 2.0, you will not have this issue anymore because the amounts that you get out of the coin joints are much more customizable than, than what was with zero link. And finally, one of the largest pain points of Wasabi is that the minimum amount that you can participate in current Wasabi mixes is 0 0.1 Bitcoin, which is quite a, quite an amount for most people and this also will be solved you won't you will be able to participate practically with any amount uh there will still be some some minimums there i'm not quite sure what but it won't be significant anymore so we will be able to include much more users than we were previously in the the coin joins Yes, very well. Uh, to sum up the, all these numerous benefits or improvements of this Wabi Sabi coin join technique is that based on its simplicity, um, first of all, a user can register multiple coins without revealing that he controls all of these coins, uh, which is a big improvement. Uh, and there is no link whatsoever between any of the uh, outputs that are being generated, uh, which is also a, a big improvement. Um, as well as no linkage between the inputs and uh, the outputs itself, right? So no no inherent crypt or no inherent communication linkage of inputs to inputs, inputs to outputs, or outputs to outputs of this transaction. Um, and another huge benefit: no change outputs, so to say, uh, or uh, hopefully uh, much 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 fewer um, uh, or fewer. Uh, so. Every coin uh, that the user receives in this output side of the coin join will have at least some level of privacy uh, improvement compared to the inputs. Uh, and, and that is quite nice to see as well. Uh, and uh, maybe even potentially uh, payments directly inside this coin join transaction uh, that would enable uh, numerous um, efficiency and privacy improvements uh, to this entire transaction. Uh, so I think uh, the the, the the future uh, of, of uh, Wabi Sabi and Wasabi 2.0 uh, 
uh, does really look uh, quite bright. Yes, uh, that's that was actually an important point. I I missed out that that there won't be changes in coin joins. I don't so we did not build the system yet, but our simulation shows that there isn't many changes. Maybe one percent of all the outputs are changed. So that's that's almost like insignificant. This also results in like, you know, currently if you have a hundred Bitcoin and you want to mix with the sub in and it's gonna take a few months, but with this it's gonna take one or two transactions if you are okay with just small amount of privacy. So so that's yeah, that's 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 huge because of the, the lack of changes, right? And also what you but I know you are much more excited about these things. For me, it's for me these things very are, are are too advanced to to talk much about that. But yes, payments in coin joins seems to be straightforward. Um, what else? Coin coin swap with inside coin joins and lightning network channel openings inside coin joins. So, so these kind of things are also going to be possible with, with Wasabi with would be possible with the Wasabi 2.0 mixing technology, but uh, it's not in scope for now. And, and I, I would like to see how the system even behaves even without these, these, well, exciting and advanced features before before any any rush implementing anything advanced. Okay, Adam, we covered a lot of ground, uh, but uh, uh, are there any other important uh, events that happened in the entirety of Wasabi's history uh, from the end of 2015 when you started hacking on this uh, to finally where we are now, beginning of 2021? Um, what was one of the uh, important uh, moments in this time period? So I think we covered many of them when Lucas joined. Uh, the first person who joined with me was that was a huge change, right? Like for two years you were working with no one and then you suddenly started working with another person that was that was an important milestone. Um, also, what I could highlight is is when we actually got the office in Hungary. Uh, for a very long time, my idea was that we are open source programmers. We can figure out what we do, and we're going to just go to a coffee every day and write code there. But other people seemed to want to have an office, and and that actually having an office is something that makes you that makes you more productive. So that that was an important milestone. And by the way, just just right now we are actually we have grown out this office, and we are we are going to move to a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is crazy. Um, for one, I love the current office. It's absolutely beautiful, uh, right on the river of Budapest. Um, uh, uh, but uh, you know, speaking actually about that growth, you know, you started out hacking uh, Wasabi by your uh, or Hidden Wallet by yourself, two thousand fifteen. Now at this point, um, how many employees uh, does the company CK Snacks actually have, or or rather, you know, contractors and, and pay contributors? So I would say we have around 20, I have around 20 colleagues here at Wasabi who are full-time working with us, but the number of actual contributors, if I would really want to be very wild about how many people have ever contributed to Wasabi in any way, then that would be, um, few hundred people or even more. So there was a lot of people who, who did did something at least. 
Yes, I think alone on the GitHub repository, there are, oh, I don't know the exact number, but well over 150 um, contributors. Uh, and, you know, that excludes everyone who has provided, you know, research ideas and, and conversational uh, help, uh, as well as you know, all education uh, and, and usage and so on. Uh, the entire community really is, is quite breathtaking large at this point, and hopefully to further increase uh, in the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Adam, this, this was a really great conversation. We really covered so much of the ground of Wasabi, uh, its history, uh, it, the reasons why you actually built this, uh, and, and where we are at in this current moment. Uh, but before I let you go, uh, there is one very, very important thing that we have to cover, uh, talking about the far ahead future. Um, eventually, you will probably be happy with the level that Wasabi is at. Um, and I know that, that you have a, a gigantically huge list uh, of projects and cool ideas that you would love to do in the future. Um, uh, tell us uh, what are your, your favorite or, or most intriguing ideas that you might see yourself doing uh, in the future. Hmm. So I'm not, I don't think, um, as, as I, I explained you, I started out this alone and I did not have much experience in, you know, running a company and I had to learn a lot about that lately. And I think there are better people who can run a company more effectively than me. So, and also after Wasabi 2.0, I, I will be somewhat out of, uh, revolutionary ideas. <laughs> so I, I don't, I'm not sure I will, I will stay with Wasabi for, for the long term. It's, it's not just that, but also while I was working on Wasabi, I also had a, a human, a human child who is growing up now and he's becoming more and more like he's starting to have a personality. And, and I don't think I'm spending enough time on, 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 on growing my, my, my own child which I think would be very important. The sooner, the better that I, I spend, spend more time and just, just, just see what I can do with this little guy. So, so maybe, maybe that's where, where I'm going to go after Wasabi Wallet 2.0 is released. Oh yeah. Very important, right? Uh, family is, is at the core. Uh, and uh, great that you have added a new block uh, to your intergenerational time chain <laughs> uh, and you have forked off uh, successfully. That's great. Um, yeah, I'm uh, curious to see uh, what you what you will uh, be in the future. Uh, might even uh, end up as, as Microsoft CEO. Uh, why not? Mm, definitely. Definitely. I... I thought about that, by the way. I thought about becoming the CEO of Microsoft, but you know, it's hard enough to, to handle 20 people company, but thousands of people and you have to talk with politicians and all these kind of crazy things that a huge CEO with a lot of responsibility for many people would, would have is I'm not sure that's maybe maybe there is a point where a company is just too big to to be feasible and maybe my maybe it's not a good idea to to actually put yourself through to to try to tackle all the issues that a huge behemoth like microsoft would would face so so yeah i i actually thought this this through at one point maybe a year ago and I, I come to the conclusion that uh, this might not be a good thing for me to do, assuming I could even get anywhere close to being the CEO of Microsoft. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm absolutely sure in a couple blocks when, when Bitcoin moons and everyone will be going crazy uh, to, to learn more about Bitcoin. 
uh, Microsoft knowing you as a prolific uh, C sharp contributor and pioneer uh, in, uh, in in using and building companies in in uh, the Microsoft uh, ecosystem with C sharp and Tavalonia. Um, yeah, why not? I mean, you're one of the most prolific GitHub contributors already. Maybe the jackpot price of becoming number one contributor on GitHub uh, is becoming at least the CTO of GitHub. Uh, you never know. <laughs> well, okay, Adam, but uh, thank you so much uh, for, for coming here and, and to have this conversation. Uh, I think we all learned a lot about the history of Wasabi and, and your personal ambition in working on that project. And it's great to see it developing at such a beautiful pace. Uh, and I'm, I'm so eager of, of what's to come in the short term and the long term. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating project to be a part of. Uh, so thanks a lot for, for uh, getting uh, this huge uh, or getting this beautiful uh, project started. Yes, thank you, Max. It was a pleasure. <laughs>